Good evening. Welcome back to tutorial number 12 in electromagnetic fields. Tutorial number 12 covers your displacement current and also Maxwell's equations. Now we will solve two problems one on displacement current and the other one on wave equation in today's tutorial class. Coming to question number one, if you carefully see, it has been given that in free space the electric field vector is having this much amount of magnitude and you are supposed to calculate the displacement current density and magnetic field intensity. Right. So, you need to compute displacement current density which is JD and the other one is this is H and you have been given this particular E. So, how to compute these two with your electric field intensity? You know that JD is equal to So, we need to compute uh, JD which is nothing but rho d by rho t and from here we need to compute magnetic field intensity we know to know that del cos h is equal to j so first of all we need to compute j d and j d depends upon d so we will utilize this particular equation which we have used in developing unit number one the relation between electric flux density and the electric field intensity it has been given here that the entire work is being done in free space which means that epsilon is equal to this relative permittivity is one so i'll directly take it as I'll modify this equation as this one. So coming to JD, it is now dou by dou t of epsilon naught E. This is a mere constant, so I'll take it as right. So you know E has already been given 20 cos omega t minus 50x a1 volts per meter. Right. So if you do it with respect to time, this is a constant. So I'll get into 20 into cos theta will become minus sine theta into integral, sorry, internal derivation. For this one, it is omega minus zero. So I'll get omega into a y bar a by m. So my expression is minus 20. This omega is there, epsilon is there, sine omega t minus 50x a y. Yeah, this was e, right? So This ampere per meter square, right? This is J. This is it. Now, uh, so moving on to the next one, which is the magnetic field intensity. Now we have already obtained the JD, right? We have obtained it as minus. My, it was minus 20 omega epsilon naught sine yeah, omega t minus 50x a by bar. Now I need to determine magnetic field intensity and the relation between these two is this is the relation right. So I don't know the value of h so for time being I'll take h it is having 
components in all the directions. So I'll take this as a H vector. And now if I do del cross H, it is you know del vector in terms of x, y, z, it is dou by dou x, dou by dou y, and dou by dou z. And the h vector is hx, hy, and hz, right? So this is nothing but ax bar into dou by dou y of hz minus dou by dou z of hy minus ay bar into dou by dou x of hz minus dou by dou z of hx and finally it is az bar into dou by dou x of hy minus dou by dou y of hx right so this is my del cross h operator if i take h as this one this is my del cross h operator now this must be equal to your displacement current density now if you compare these two equations see i don't have any x component in my jd and i don't have any y component in this sorry z component in this one so which means that only this is possible now the rest of all are going to be zero isn't it so now what i will do this one is on comparing del cross h and jd vectors now what i will get see minus minus i'll remove it so this component is equal to this component right so which means that dou by dou x of hz minus dou by dou z of hx is equal to 20 omega epsilon naught sine omega t minus 50x right once again if you carefully see that the value has a component of it is able to get derived with respect to x isn't it but if you don't carefully see you don't find anything which is uh, with respect to z so for simplification what i'll consider is i'll consider it as dou by dou z component of hx is zero that is hx is some independent of z so this is for my if i consider hx is independent of z so what i'll get i'll get only this component is equal to this component so i'll write it again so it is dou by dou x of hz is equal to 20 omega epsilon naught sine omega t minus 50x so if i want hz now so what i should do i should do it integral with respect to dx right so if i do it see this is a constant so 20 omega epsilon naught will come up for sine theta the integral is cos theta minus cos theta right into the internal integral it is this is 0 minus 50 right internal derivative so or i'll get minus minus will get cancelled it is 20 by 50 it is 0 0.4 0 0.4 omega epsilon naught cos omega t minus 50x this is amplitude right this is my hz already i have taken hx and hy as zero so and only hz component is present so now my h vector is it doesn't has anything in a direction nothing in y direction only this component is there in z direction so my answer is this one right hope you have understood how to solve these type of problems and now moving on to problem number two find the velocity of a plane wave 
in a lossless medium having a relative permittivity of 5 and relative permeability of 0.8. So how to determine the velocity of a plane wave in a lossless medium? We know that V is equal to 1 by square root of mu into epsilon. If you want to write it clearly, it is mu naught, mu r, epsilon naught, epsilon r, right? So now we will try to solve this one. 1 by square root of mu naught, mu r, epsilon naught, epsilon r, right? Mu naught value, you know it. It is 4 pi into 10 to the power of minus 7. Mu r is related to permeability. It has been given as 0 0.8. Epsilon naught, it is 8.85 into 10 to the power of minus 12. And epsilon r, related to permittivity, it has been given as, uh, yeah, 5. It has been given as Right. So if you solve this one, you will get this one point five into ten to the power of minus so ten to the power of eight meters per second. This is the way how we determine the velocity of a plane wave in lossless medium. Hope you solve the remaining problems which I have given you as a homework. And the rest we will see in the class. Thank you.